Steven Chenault from Troller Games is joining me here at Gamehole Con. My God, the video is so crisp, clear. <laughs> you can see every pore on my face. No sorry, doubt. Sorry to say, we do not have a cameraman for this convention, as I mentioned previously. But I did want to talk to Steven because there's always something cooking with the Troll Lords. <laughs> Always. I, don't, I don't know if that's good or bad. Yeah, I, think I don't it, know. I think it's good for the hobby. <laughs> it's probably good for the hobby and good for Troll Lord. We, we will uh, we'll go that direction. So first thing I'm going to talk about is, well, we're going to talk Castles and Crusades, then we're going to kind of segue into Amazing Adventures, which I am actually very excited to take a too. peek at. Uh, but first of all, I believe Hopefully by the end of the year, we are going to see Castles and Crusades Reforged. Yes. Which had a really nice Kickstarter for you. It did. Uh, we had a lot of support come out. A lot of people jumped on board, which was fantastic. Uh, and it's allowing us to redo, for the first time in the game's history, the three core books, the Player's Handbook, the Monsters and Treasures, and the Castle Keeper's Guide, all at the same time. Mm -hmm. So we'll roll those all out. They are in the process of going to the printers. All I'm waiting for at the moment is the... We get, once they, they send a quote over, I sign it, and then they put a slot for me, and it goes up, and that'll be probably Monday, Tuesday, we'll get all that squared away. Three to four weeks, the things roll out, so hopefully we're looking at uh, early December, we're sitting on all of the reports. books. And they will all have a uh, uniform layout? Yes. I believe that we are going to see images for every monster? Yes, that is the most exciting part for me. I know we're pulling the OGL out, and a lot of people are excited about that, and that's great, but this will be the first time that every monster in the in the book will have, and it's I think it's like 300 monsters. I'm not sure. It's a lot of monsters. Uh, each one will have their own picture that is exactly as described in the book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that so the picture lines up. Uh, and I I finished. Peter laid that out. He finished it. I guess a couple of days before game hole, and I got a chance to go through it, uh, tweak a little bit, but it looks fantastic. I am just super jazzed on this art. It is just great. And I believe you're hoping, fingers crossed, that. Those will be available by this holiday season. Yeah, that's the plan. I think in the first week of December, we will ship them out to, if everything goes to plan, we'll ship them out to backers. And okay. as soon as 50% of the backers are in the mail, we'll put it up on the store and put it up for sale, uh, which should land it beautifully just before Christmas. So people can get it under the tree. It's important to, to note they are not on sale here at Game Hole Con. They are not. Well, you know, there are some publishers who will bring no. their books before the backers no, we, get them. We have a strict policy of not doing that amazing. We do have amazing adventures here, but we shipped all of the backers' amazing adventures mm -hmm. out. We did an Indiegogo campaign on that about a year ago, year and a half ago, and all the backers shipped before it came here. Because that's it's very frustrating to back something, wait two years and see it pop up. Right. <laughs> very frustrating. Yes. yes. There was some controversy at a certain Gary Con <laughs> recently. And we won't get into, but and, I mean, on one hand, I understand why publishers do it. I get if it. If they ask the backers first, yeah. because of course, usually by the time books are rolling out, it's not a lot of operating capital for the publisher. So I understand. I do too. It's but ask. And it is, and it's like always, a, it's so close to a convention, and you're like, well, you know, this could be, this could make or break the convention. So I, I completely right. understand it. And I would say 99 out of 100 backers are more than forgiving. Willing, yeah, yes. they're like, yeah, sure, right. you know, they don't. Let's keep talking a little bit about Castles and Crusades. Uh, well, okay, so here's something I want to point out that I, I hear from people all the time. They're always asking me, hey, Jeff, you know, you talk about Castles and Crusades, and no, I'm not a shill for... <laughs> Troll Lord Games. Uh, it comes up in you know, conversation on the live show, and of course I share videos and that. People will ask me, well, Jeff, what edition should I pick up? Mm. Because the trade dress is so different on so many yeah. of the books, and I always tell them it's important for them to understand it's all one edition. It is. It is, absolutely. So the, the, there's been two changes. So we're on the 10th printing, and we'll just kind of anchor on the 10th printing of the Player's mm -hmm. Handbook, because everything that the PHB does, the other two follow. Sure. So we're on the 10th printing of the Player's Handbook, and we've had two shifts in the text inside of it. In the, from the, I think it was the third or the fourth. It might, it was third or the fourth printing. We added, we changed the Barbarian completely, and then we changed some of the nomenclature on the Monk's abilities, making them a little bit more generic because before it was like it had the key strike or kite strike i'm trying to say that key strike 
and we changed that to like Death Strike. So it was just a little, if you didn't want to play the Kung Fu or whatever, right. you could play, you know, the Drunken Boxer. And this is what a monk is. So we, so we did that, and then we added 40 odd spells. That was the first thing. The second change is in from the 9th to the 10th. Um, and it really, all we did was clean the open gaming license out. Yep. It changed. Which, the, honestly, I don't I think there was all that much in there. It was anyway. not. It was about 10% of the PHB. Most of it caught up in the, in the language describing the spells. Yes. I went through and rewrote each of the spells to make sure all of that SR, but it's the same spell, it does the same thing. Sure. It's just written, you know, in my voice as opposed to whatever was in the SRD back in the day. The changes that are going to be a little bit, um, that are going to shock a few people, some of the spell names changed. Uh, and we went from alignment to disposition, and that's it. Uh, beyond that, the game's the same. The siege engine stays, it plays the same, all right. the characters have the same abilities, the same nomenclature, all of that stays the same. Uh, monsters stay the same. The Castle Keeper's Guide changed not a whit, except the spell names that we had changed, we had to go. And you know, like, Magic Missile is now Magi's Missile. So mm -hmm. it's not like it's even going to be... Oh my gosh, it's completely <laughs> different now. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be a shock. It creates a waterfall, uh, everybody. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, I, I don't know, I, I think that if you pick up the first printing and someone has the tenth printing, you're going to be able to play super easy. I mean, it's not... Now, what is that? What does that uh, YouTuber say? Super easy, barely, barely an inconvenience, or whatever. <laughs> the, the movie guy. I can't remember his, his channel. Great stuff. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's not going to be a huge change. I, it'll be the same thing anytime. It'll take you a little bit to adjust. Maybe a game, maybe half a game, and then you'll forget about it and move on. Other thing I've mentioned since you know I'm part of the sales force here <laughs> is uh, <laughs> people only need the player book Correct. and the monsters and treasure. Correct. That's it. That's all you need. There's uh, a Castle Keeper's Guide, and I think there's a little confusion. We've talked about this previously, that people think, oh yeah, okay, so it's uh, three core books like just about everybody else. No, that's not mm. the case, there's two. There's two, the player's handbook has, the first section is the player's part, the second sec section is the Castle Keeper and the game, and it explains how to run games, gives a sample adventure, you know, all of that stuff. And it, you probably could get, get away without using the monster manual, monster, the Monsters and Treasures, and use any number of other monster manuals that you have on your shelf. But it does help because it is all in the same kind of language and sure. whatnot. Uh, so yeah, you really only need the two books. You don't need, you do not need the Castle Keeper's Guide. As much as I love the CKG, you do not. So I understand, and I know this isn't really your territory, but I do understand that Castles yeah. and Crusades is undergoing uh, foundryification, I guess I'll say. Yes. I know yes. a lot of people are very excited about that. Any idea maybe when that'll be rolling out? So I really think uh, Chuck Combos, he heads all that up. So he's kind of managing that side of things. He keeps me you know, informed of where we are. And I think mm -hmm. they're about halfway through. I don't know all the coding stuff and all the stuff that goes into that. But I think it's supposed to be out about the time Reforged comes out. So I think it's sometime wow. in December. Okay. I could be wrong on that, but it's going to be sooner rather than later. It shouldn't be like six months, eight months out or anything like that. Uh, I think they're, they're fired up to do it and they're working like crazy to get it out. So. And those who watch the live show already know I said when it comes out, I will run a Castles and Crusades adventure through Foundry for That'd be fantastic. anybody who wants to sign up. That would be so, very, very cool. So it'll be a game with like 100 people? <laughs> That's a lot of people. <laughs> no, it's going to be about four or five. There you go. So, uh, it might be yeah. a little easier to handle. <laughs> yeah. Act now. Yeah. <laughs> so the other thing I wanted to talk about, which I'm super excited to take a peek at because I've never seen it, and it is for sale here at yes. the show. Sadly, when people hear this, they're not going to be able to come and get it. But they'll be able to order it over at the Troll Lords website. Yes. And that is Amazing Adventures. I am so, I'm so excited about this. So we put Amazing Adventures out. Jason Bay wrote uh, Amazing Adventures a long time ago. Uh, and we first published it as a, it's, we called it uh, a Siege Engine Light because he used a good chunk of the Siege Engine and then he kind of tweaked it. And he and I sat down and talked about it later because a lot of the CNC fans weren't, they weren't jumping on board. So he went back through it and kind of retooled it, brought it up to the Siege Engine, and then we put the second edition, second printing of it out. That you might be able to say is second edition. Um, and so it's been in, in, you know, in circulation for quite a while. But a year and a half ago, whenever it was, you know, I sat down with Jason and I said, I want to, we're overhauling all of this stuff with the open gaming license. Let's just, let's just overhaul all of this. So 
We got new art. We got Jason Walton that did some fantastic art for the cover. We got a ton of great art that goes inside of it. It's full color now. And for those who don't know, Amazing Adventures is a multi-genre role-playing game. You can play literally any genre you want. A detective, you know, World War II, modern, it doesn't matter. It's sure. all its all built into it. Uh, he's got great weapons tables. Pulp he's, adventure, pulp science adventure, fiction, it's all, all on the table. Yes, it's absolutely great. Uh, and it's got me really super fired up because I've been doing, a, I've really gotten into the whole UFO thing. I'm reading lots of books on UFOs and UAPs and all that stuff. It's, it's all right, everybody. Well, so it's good talking to Stephen. <laughs> As he as he wanders off. No, no, off. Stephen, I don't want that Kool-Aid. Please, no. <laughs> yeah, all right. But when I immediately, so that's coming, when I'm reading all these books, Amazing Adventures comes back from the printer. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. So I immediately dive in. I'm starting to put UFO stuff into, <laughs> into an Amazing Adventures adventure I'm working on, talking to Jason about it. What are we doing with the Greys? And so he's all, because the Greys are in there, too. He's got it all covered, right? Sure. Uh, and it, and it, so it's absolutely fantastic. So I'm, I'm particularly jazzed about <laughs> Amazing Adventures to do some UFO stuff. But uh, it really is that game that will let you do anything you want. And the nice thing is, if you play a fighter in Castles and Crusades, and you time jump through some strange portal into 1948 America, you can pick up your amazing adventures and it'll play the exact same. You don't need to worry about rules or any of that sure. stuff. Uh, so, And it's designed that way. So it'll be a seamless kind of transition back and forth. And you've got four adventures for it right yes. off the bat. Uh, Shadows of the Red God, Rings of the Red God, Rise of the Red God, uh, and Deeper Darkness, yeah. How many of those UFO based? None, because Jason <laughs> wrote them before I got so excited about UFOs. <laughs> but uh, the Ruins of Innsmeet, which is, for those who know uh, Castles and Crusades line, the C series I wrote years ago, and Innsmeet is C6. Well, I took Innsmeet out of the world of Aird, and I put it in Arkansas, oh, wow. in the modern era, okay. and it's the ruins of it. It's the exact same town. It's kind of like this juxtaposition through magic and the rings and brass and portals and all of that stuff. So I went back through. We haven't printed that. We'll print that on Monday or Tuesday. I went back through and put some UFO stuff in this <laughs> version of it. <laughs> all right. So I slipped a little bit in there. <laughs> you heard it here first. And in Jason's defense, he's not so sure about this whole UFO thing I'm on. but. <laughs> Now I'll, I'll end up talking to you at Gen Con. You'll be like, UFOs? I'll be no. on to something else. It'll, no. <laughs> it'll not be, interested at all. Bigfoot, who knows what it'll be right? then. <laughs> yeah, the cryptids. That's right, Under yeah. the cryptids. <laughs> What's cooking with the works of Gary Gygax? So we've got uh, a huge thing on the, two huge things on the horizon. Gary Gygax's Castle's Aggies. And in mm -hmm. January, February, we haven't pinpointed the date. I'm tentatively looking at February 11th. Uh, to launch a backer kit campaign. We're going to move from Kickstarter to backer kit for this specific crowdfunding campaign. Okay. And we're going to do uh, Castle Zagig, the whole, I think, all the Yigsburg, all the castle, and the first two or three levels of the actual dungeon will be part of that Kickstarter. Super excited about that. I know that level one's done. Level two is, I think, written two, mostly done. And Mike has started in on level three. Uh, and now it's kind of an art mapping. The mapping becomes part sure. of a huge thing. Right. Uh, so that will be that will be first quarter. And then probably second quarter, we will do our bar, begin our Barsoom stuff, um, which I'm, ex for those who don't know, that's John Carter, World of mm -hmm. Mars, by Edgar Rice Burroughs. And I'm personally excited about that. I've been a Burroughs reader since the 1970s and a John Carter fan forever in a day. So this so is Disney for, made that movie and then that, I actually enjoyed the was, movie. It was, it was fine. It that was movie fine. It was fine. Yes. I don't know why people got so upset. They did. I didn't it was good. It it's was like, you know. It's not Star Wars folks. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. It's Plus different. everybody hates Star Wars now anyway. Yeah everybody's so, so upset about it. <laughs> Wherever the pendulum is, you know. Right. <laughs> Whatever. But uh, I enjoyed the movie. Could it have been better probably. Of course. Uh, I wish that they had done another one just to see if they could have refined it some. Sure. Um, but uh, for me, the Barsoom stuff is just, I honestly think, and Burroughs certainly didn't do this intentionally, but uh, I think it is the setting tailor-made for role-playing game. I mean, it's got its own monsters, it's got its yeah, own I can physics, see that. it's got, you know... It's, it's got its weird science weird aspect si to yeah, it. Yeah, it's just crazy. It's got its romance. Yeah. And it's got strong female leads, strong male leads. Oh my it's, God, and there's UFOs. And there's UFOs! Oh. <laughs> it all comes together. <laughs> it's like a circle. That's right. Uh-oh, like a crop circle. Well, right. Like a crop circle. <laughs> We're sliding down. 
So when are we going to host that podcast about UFOs together, Steve? Soon. Very, very soon. <laughs> we're actually, we're definitely going to do something on UFOs on our Twitch channel, and you're more than welcome to, to jump in. Uh, I'm filled with it at the moment. Uh, yeah, we got, we got a lot of jaw on to do about that stuff. <laughs> so any final thoughts you'd like to share with the audience? Well, I'd like to thank everybody for the continued support for trolling. I mean, that is absolutely fantastic. And you yourself, thank you for all the support. You're not a shill. <laughs> I think that <laughs> you certainly are not. Uh, yeah, uh, we appreciate it. But honestly, and I've kind of been always reluctant to say this because I don't want to be that guy, but it's a, it's a good game if it's not the best game on the market. Castles and Crusades, whether you're coming from 5th edition or AD&D or wherever, is a fantastic, it's the game you want to play because you can take it and make it your own. If you want to be you know, super crunchy, you can do it. If you want to be super you know, theater of the mind, you can do it, whatever you want to do. Uh, so if you haven't played CNC, go to our website, download the Player's Handbook, it's for free. Uh, check the game out. I think it's the game you want to play. Uh, I tell people all the time that if they're looking for a fantasy role-playing game that isn't completely tied into the OSR, right? It's right. not built on top of like OD&D. Right. But if they want more modern mechanics or a modern design style, but still get that old school flavor, it's the game. take a look at Castles and Crusades, yeah. It's the game. And even for those people that are coming in from fifth edition that are, that are you know, young to the hobby and all of that, there's no rules bloat, there's no mechanics yeah. bloat. It's just, if you want to play whatever it is you want to play, uh, I, I know that it's real popular to play like anthropomorphic creatures and uh, monster races. Mm -hmm. You can do that in CNC. Yeah. There's nothing, you just go. There's no canon as you, whatever the word, right. you know, I'm looking for. I also love the fact old TSR modules can easily be ported oh, yeah. over to it. Oh yeah. I'm literally, well, I shouldn't say right now, I just finished it a few months ago. I ran Village of Hamlet. There you go. <laughs> I really love All them. four adventures? Or... I did not. I'm kind of a T1 only guy. <laughs> well, because so many people only had that for so long. That would be me. <laughs> me too. Yes. Yep, yep. Still my favorite TSR module is the Village of Hamlet, without a doubt. It is solid. It still it's holds solid. up. Yes. It holds up. And, and it's it, just cool. It's a nice sandbox, too. Yep. You can go anywhere you want. You're not and that, tied into it. That picture of the moat house is yes. unbeatable. It's just unbeatable. Stephen, thank you very much for taking some time out. It is busy here at Game Old Con Always 2024. Busy. And uh, enjoy the con. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me on.